we have reached a point where we can predict how future civilizations will develop. Allow me to describe the Kardashev scale. The Kardashev scale rates the technological capabilities of a civilization based on its ability to control and exploit energy. In 1964, while searching for traces of extraterrestrial life inside cosmic signals, the Russian astronomer Nikolai Semenovich Kardashev suggested a system for rating these hypothetical civilizations based on their energy consumption. Consequently, the Kardashev scale was devised as a means of gauging the technical development of a civilization based on the amount of usable energy it possesses. The scale follows the scale of astrophysical structures in our local universe with its three sorts. The basic calibration is based on three energy positions on a scale that corresponds to the ability to properly manage the energy resources of a habitable planet, type 1, the star of the respective solar system, type 2, and its galaxy, type 3. Other astronomers have added type 4 and type 5 to the scale. Examples of civilizations that may correspond to the Kardashev scale include both alien and earthly societies. In order to identify our current civilization, the American astronomer and astrophysicist Carl Sagan expanded and calibrated the scale prior to Type 1. The reason the human race is not even on Type 1 is that we continue to meet our energy needs on Earth by consuming dead flora and animals. We are only a culture of Type 0 and have a very long way to go before being elevated to a Type 1 culture. According to Carl Sagan, our terrestrial civilization was at 0.58 on the scale during the Industrial Revolution in 1900, whereas it was at 0.72 in 2012. According to Freeman Dyson, humanity will likely achieve type 1 in 100 to 200 years, type 2 in 11,200 years, and type 3 in 100,000 to 1 million years. Now let's take a deeper look at some characteristics of the four power positions. What does each of these classifications literally mean? Type 0, a Type 0 civilization derives its energy primarily from sources where energy forms are lightly stored and are discovered prior to the specific types 1, 2, 3. Our current culture is Type 0, which utilizes fossil fuels such as coal, oil, and natural gas. As previously stated, it is accepted that we have not yet reached Type 1 on the Kardashev scale. A Type 1 civilization has total control over the planet's energy resources. As a Type 1 civilization, we would have the ability to dominate the entire planet. Therefore, this civilization has managed to tame and absorb the energy provided by its fully controlled home planet. It would be capable of gathering all the starlight that falls on the globe, for instance. Nevertheless, the power to harness all of the Earth's energy would also allow us to control all natural forces. The planet's temperature and climate may be managed in the same way that we manage volcanoes, weather conditions, and even earthquakes. This society may have the ability to manipulate both weaving and earthquakes at will, so that humans could affect nature. At least, that is the core concept. Imagine that, compared to the advancements that can be made in the following years, these are merely primordial and fundamental levels of control. Type 2, what is the next step? A society of Type 2. This is the next stage of a civilization's evolution. At this phase, the residents of a civilization are able to harness the power of their mother star, their sun, not just by converting the star's light into energy, but also by manipulating the star itself. It would control the orbits of all planets in the system, harvest asteroids and comets at will, and consume the solar system. For instance, if humans survived long enough to reach this level, and a moon-sized object entered our solar system on a collision path with our little blue planet, we would be able to eradicate it from the ground up. Or, if we had the time, we could relocate our planet to avoid it entirely. But let's assume we didn't want to shift the planet. Are there any other alternatives? Yes since we would be able to shift Jupiter, or another planet of our choosing, along its path. Isn't that incredible? Therefore, we progress from controlling a planet to controlling a star, which will enable us to amass sufficient 
disposable energy to render our civilization almost impervious to destruction. It is vital to note that its energy consumption is 10 billion times greater than that of the civilization type 1. Class 3 in addition to type 3 culture, a species is now becoming an intergalactic traveler with extensive knowledge of all individuals who deal with energy, which will result in its species being the dominating race. A type 3 civilization would colonize and govern multiple systems across the entire cosmos. From a human perspective, hundreds of thousands of years of biological and technological evolution can cause the people of this type 3 civilization to be vastly different from humans as we know them. A type 3 civilization controls energy on a galactic scale throughout the entirety of its galaxy and may have annihilated one or more adjacent galaxies. Such a society has advanced to the point of experimenting with black holes. He can travel in space and time within the same place and has the capacity to escape in the past in case the heat of death is caused in his life. In a similar manner, its energy consumption is 10 billion times greater than that of a Type 2 civilization. Type 4 is an expansion of the scale. This society would be supergalactic, able to travel throughout the entire universe and consume the energy output of a number of galaxies, if not all of them. Zoltan Galantai has defined a speculative extension of the scale with a Type 4 civilization that is in the best possible position to manage the energy of the entire visible universe and possibly dark matter. He may be able to go to other universes or transfer information to them so that a society of Type 0 can evolve into a civilization of Type 1. Such civilization is approaching or exceeding even the exotic bounds of scientific imagination based on our existing scientific knowledge and may be impossible to exist. Scientists have conceded that such a civilization would be undetectable since its activities would be identical to those of natural processes. In his book, Parallel Worlds, scientist Michio Kaku provides an alternate definition for Type 4, labeling the civilization that can control galactic energy sources such as so-called dark energy. The Dyson Sphere is regarded to be a feasible method for completely capturing an astronomer's energy. A hypothetical megastructure that encloses a star and stores the energy it emits. In 1937, the science fiction author Olaf Stapleton proposed this design in his novel Star Maker. In 1960, physicist Freeman Disson pushed and popularized the notion in his research search for artificial stellar sources of infrared radiation. Disson anticipated that the existence of such buildings would be the inevitable result of the increasing energy requirements of a technological society and the need to ensure its long-term survival. He further stated that the quest for such structures may lead to the finding of advanced and intelligent extraterrestrial life forms. There might be several sorts of spheres, and their energy absorption capacity would match the Kardashian scale's technical development stages. Dyson bullets are the numerous forms of comparable devices that aim to directly exploit stars and store their energy, with some hypothetical proposals extending to the potential to reside or establish an economy within these structures. The majority of concepts are depicted as a shell that encircles a star, but there are also versions in which the device is a ring or battery array. According to experts, when culture evolves and becomes more modern, its energy requirements would increase significantly due to population growth and the energy needs of its numerous machinery. With this in mind, the Kardashian scale has been devised as a means of gauging a culture's technological advancement based on the amount of available energy it possesses. Let's examine the transition from Type 0 to Type I civilization in further detail. Will we survive? As previously said, we can calculate when we will reach Type 1 and the answer is in around 100 years, at which point we will be able to manipulate weather conditions, earthquakes, and other planetary phenomena. Due to the fact that we possess chemical and biological weapons capable of eradicating all life on Earth, the period of transition from Type 0 to Type 1 culture is regarded as the most critical and perilous. Also, we have not acquired sufficient collective intelligence, and the introduction of new powers could obliterate our culture before it completes its transition to Type 1 status. Nuclear, 
biological, and geophysical weapons of mass destruction, unregulated rise in the temperature of the Earth, destruction of natural protective mechanisms, such as the magnetosphere ozone layer, etc. Let's view the situation from a different angle. There are indications that we are closer to achieving type 1 than we believe. For example, the taming of nuclear energy, globalization efforts in technology, language, culture, and the political system, as well as the successful prediction and production of earthquakes, are regarded as indicators of the transition from type 0 to type I for human civilization on Earth. Also, something that requires considerable time and effort. Internet use. It is something we all use in our daily lives and is an integral part of who we are. However, for scientists, the internet is much more than that. It is a crucial indicator that type 1 has just begun. We shall be fortunate to witness the birth of type 1 diabetes. We shall be a part of producing history and discovering new horizons of which we are unaware. What keeps us interested and captivates us about the Kardashev scale is the possibility that what we see in popular television shows and films may come true in the future. It is not simply science fiction, but also a very dangerous scenario. It is the intersection of imagination and reality, and don't you find that remarkable? Now that we understand the Kardashev scale and are certain that we are type 1 based on instances from our daily lives, I believe we may see our daily routine with greater appreciation. And it doesn't matter that we won't be able to reach the top of the scale, for the fact that we have thought and wish for this to occur is enough to make us happy. Thank you everybody for watching. I would really like to hear your perspective regarding Kardashev scale. Do you concur with these categories? Do you believe we are nearing a type 1 civilization? Would you like to be there for this? Tell me below in the comments.